Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We get to hear from Polixenes today in Act 4, Scene 4. Now remember, Polixenes is in disguise at this point in the play, as is Camillo, because he wanted to spy on his son Florizel to find out why Florizel has been spending so much time over at the shepherd's house. Here's a hint, it's because Florizel is in love with Perdita. So Perdita is the queen of the sheep shearing festival. She was greeting people with flowers and this and that and the other thing. And she and Florizel actually really want to be together and, and get married and all of that stuff. And um, she's, she's hosting as best she can and some singing and some dancing has happened. And a, a, a servant of the old shepherd came in and let them know that there's this man just over there who has all these great songs and all these fancy clothes and ribbons and stuff like that. And they're like, yeah, sure, bring him on in. Why not? Let's, let's bring him on in. And through all of these interactions, Polixenes has noticed that Perdita carries herself much more nobly than she should for being a shepherd's daughter, which remember, she's not a shepherd's daughter. She's a king's daughter who was abandoned in a forest by a king's friend because the king went bonkers, but is now like feeling bad about that. But that's the other three acts that we're not really thinking about right now. So um, he has, Polixenes had like sort of a little side conversation with the shepherd um, to sort of ask about her and that sort of thing. And the shepherd, the shepherd expresses that he hopes that Florizel, who's kind of in disguise right now and has given them a false name, and his daughter get married. He thinks that that would be a great match. But then the announcement of this man, who is Autolycus, who we met before, who's a pickpocket and a thief who robbed the clown of all of his money, he comes in and he's, he's singing songs and he's singing songs about buy my wares and buy my ribbons and buy my trinkets and all this sort of stuff. And we get to see the clown with his two shepherdesses, both of whom he said he would take to this feast, to this festival and buy them stuff. Their names are Mata and Orcas, I think. Um, but they're like, you promised me this and you promised me this. And he's like, didn't I tell you somebody stole all of my money while I was coming here? It was Autolycus that stole it, but he's not paying attention to that right now because um, he didn't see Autolycus do it. And Autolycus blamed it on somebody named Autolycus, but hasn't introduced himself as Autolycus. So they, they go back and forth for a little while, and the four of them actually sing a song together, Autolycus and Mopsa and Dorcas and the clown Dorcas. That's, yeah, I think D-O-R-C-A-S, I think is how that's found, not D-O-R-K-U-S. <laughs> But anyway, they, they sing a song and then they realize that this is probably, they should do this somewhere else other than in front of the king. So they go off to move on to the next things. And then another shepherd comes in or another servant comes in and says, there's this group of 12 dancers that want to present this dance. Uh, one of them has supposedly danced in front of the king before and he's supposedly not that bad. And the shepherd's like, we don't need to see that one. And Polixenes is like, no, let's, let's see it. And the shepherd's like, aren't you getting bored yet? And Polixenes is like, no, bring him on in. We'll, we'll, we'll watch another dance. So they watch another dance. And as the dance is ending, Polixenes says, oh, father, you'll know more of that hereafter. Is it not too far gone? It is time to part them. He's simple and tells much. And then he's talking to Florizel that little bit with Stigamello. How now, fair shepherd? Your heart is full of something that does take your mind from feasting. Sooth, when I was young and handed love, as you do, I was wont to load my she with knacks. I would have ransacked the peddler's silken treasury and have powered it to her acceptance. You have let him go, and nothing marted with him. If your last interpretation should abuse and call this your lack of love or bounty, you are straighted for a reply at least, if you make a care of happy holding her. So he starts out just remarking the, the first sentence of that is sort of a, a remark to the shepherd like, well, you didn't know this dance before, but now you do. And then he has a quick aside to Camillo where he's like, all right, we need to stop this whole thing. And then he decides to have a little father-son time with Florizel, even though Florizel doesn't know that this is his father sitting there. He thinks it's um, just another 
poor man who's come to the sheep shearing festival. So what he's saying to Florizel is that when he used to court women, he would buy them all the stuff. And here was Autolycus who had all of the stuff and Florizel let him go without buying any of the stuff. So Perdita is probably gonna think that Florizel doesn't love her. And Florizel is like, no, 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 I, she doesn't want things. The, the stuff that she wants for me is my heart and soul and love, which I've already told her that she has. And he's like, oh, that's kind of cute. That's kind of nice. And he's like, yeah, and I, I hope that I get to marry her someday and blah, blah, blah. And they, they do actually turn to Perdita to their credit at this point. They say, well, how do you feel about him? And she's like, you know, I'm, I'm very much in love with him too. And if I could say the same things, I would. And the old shepherd is like, hooray! And Florizel kind of officially asks for her hand. And the old shepherd's like, give me your hands. I'll marry you right now. And Polixenes, in disguise, says to Florizel, he's like, hey, come here, come here just, just real quick. Um, do you have a dad? And Florizel's like, yeah, I have a dad, but he doesn't, he doesn't need to be here. And, and Polixenes is like, but, you know, for a dad to watch his son get married, like, that's a pretty big thing. That's a thing that a dad should get to do. And Florizel's like, yeah, no, my dad doesn't need to know anything about this. And it's much better if he never knows anything about this. And Polixenes is like, but, but like, is he, is he mean? Is he stupid? Is he infirm? Is there like some reason why he can't or shouldn't be here? And Florizel's like, no, he's, he's in good health. He's fine. He just, he just doesn't need to be there. He doesn't need to know about any of this. At which point, Polixenes reveals himself with a nice long monologue that we'll get to hear tomorrow. So I'll see you then for that.